Okay, so in the labs up until now, we've largely been dealing with imagery that was collected from a drone at one point in time. And there's a lot you can do with that, but, but really for some powerful analysis, we need to be able to consider uh, imagery from multiple dates. And as soon as we start doing that, then the alignment of the image sets over time becomes really important. And, and that's a concept called uh, co-registration, or, or in some textbooks it's just called registration. And uh, so in this lab, we want to walk through how to do this image alignment or image registration, co-registration in Metashape. So uh, to, to do that, we need also to talk about chunks. And so when you start a new Metashape project here, notice how uh, we have our workspace and then below that workspace is it says chunk one. And up until now, whenever we've loaded stuff into Metashape, it's just by default gone into this chunk. And you can think of a chunk as like a folder or, or like a sub workspace. And so we can put sets of images in a chunk and we can create a new chunk and put different images in that and we can process them separately. So we're going to use these chunks to uh, process imagery from two different dates and then we're going to align the, the two chunks to each other. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the goal here for this lab. So the first thing we want to do is uh, load some imagery in. So I'm going to come to workflow, add folder, and uh, here's our co-registration lab. We're going to load the September 2021 images in. Uh, let me resize that a little so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay, these are, uh, this is from a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, so it's a single camera image. So here's all of our, all of our photos here, okay? And uh, what we want to do now is actually rename this chunk so we don't get confused later. So I'm going to call it September 2021. You can see I've got 163 cameras in there. All right. Now I'm going to right click on my workspace here and choose add chunk. And you can see that just made another one called chunk one. Okay. And it uh, has zero cameras in it. Now notice that it's bold. The text around it is bold and the September 2021 is not bold. So the one that's listed in bold is your active chunk. So if you start grabbing tools or, or doing operations from the menu or things like that. It's, it's always going to happen on the active chunk. Okay, and so you can uh, just double click on the chunks to, to sort of switch one, which one is active. All right, so make sure chunk one is active. And then we'll come to uh, workflow, add folder, and we'll go grab the October 2020 uh, images here. Okay, same area. This is a uh, for a wood products company. Um, we did some flights there to estimate volume of wood chip piles um, that uh, they use for creating food packaging products. Um, and it's something we go down every month and, and do that. And so we're going to look at two different dates about a year apart uh, for this, uh, this food packaging. Okay, so I got my uh, October images in. Let's rename that chunk. October uh, 2020 helps if I can spell. Okay, <clears throat> so here's my two chunks. Now at this point, we're just going to proceed like we we always do for labs. So we're going to align the photos. Uh, we'll do some um, sparse point cloud optimizations. We don't. We're not going to worry about ground control for this lab. Um, so we'll just skip that step. We do have good ground control for for both these image sets. But in the in the interest of time, we're gonna we're gonna skip that, and we don't actually need that uh, at this point. So uh, so go ahead, uh, align your photos, uh, do the point cloud optimization, uh, build a dense point cloud, a uh, DEM, and an ortho mosaic. Okay, uh, for the uh, alignment uh, for this lab, we can go ahead and choose medium accuracy. Um, that's gonna give us just a, a fine result here. And for the uh, dense point clouds, you can actually choose low accuracy uh, for, for that one, all right? So I'm going to uh, go ahead and stop here, um, and uh, I'll come back uh, once all of these things are done. Make sure you do all of these steps for each of the, of the chunks, okay? So activate each chunk and, uh, and work through the whole process, and then we'll resume at that point. 
All right, so I've got all of my stuff built. I've got uh, uh, photos aligned, dense clouds, DEMs, ortho mosaics for both my chunks, September 2021 and October 2020. So now we're going to start the process of aligning these uh, these chunks to each other or aligning the the uh, 3D models for each of these dates. Uh, one of the things that's kind of helpful here, uh, if you have two chunks and just you want to see how sort of well aligned they are uh, before you even start, there's this button on the right hand side of the toolbar here. Uh, if you mouse over it, I think it's called like show aligned chunks or something like that. If you click on that, it's actually going to overlay the other point cloud. So, so we're looking at the active chunk is September 2021 and it's actually overlaying the October 2020 point cloud on there as well. So you can toggle this on and off and just see uh, you know, how things line up. You, know, you can tilt this, zoom in and out, um, those kinds of things. It's a, kind of a handy little tool just to see how well you're, you're doing. So you can go ahead and play around with that. So for the process of actually aligning the chunks, we are going to do what's called marker-based alignment. And uh, for that, we're going to create some like pseudo ground control points. And so these are things that we can see and positively, positively identify on um, each of the dates. And then we're going to use those to kind of lock these two models into each other. Metashape's just going to try to sort of slide or, or sort of rotate or scale the models around so that those ground control points line up as uh, as close as we can. So we're going to use the ortho mosaic. So here's the ortho. I clipped it down to a smaller region just to, to help the processing speeds a little bit. But we're going to zoom in here on a, uh, a feature. So here's this cable spool uh, right here. And uh, that has not moved, you know, in the entire time that we've been doing this project. I don't think that cable spool has moved an inch. So that for, for our two dates, that'll be a good uh, uh, ground control marker to pick. And uh, I actually cheated and, uh, and set all these markers up ahead of time. Um, so I tagged one here at the, uh, at the cable spool. And uh, from here, with this chunk um, sort of... Uh, uh, you know, September 2021 being displayed, I'm going to switch over to the References tab. And you'll see I have five ground control points here. Here, let me zoom out so you can see all of them. All right, so one, two, three, four, and five. I tried to get them sort of spread out. Um, we're, we're mostly going to be interested in this eastern portion uh, of it. But, uh, you know, same, same rules apply here as for, for regular ground control. The, the sort of better more even distribution you can have of these things, the, the, the better result you're going to get. Um, but from here, okay, I tagged my first ground control point on the ortho, and then I can right click on the marker um, here in the references tab, and I can do filter photos by marker. And then same process that I, I do for all of my uh, other uh, regular ground control, right? We're going to open these photos up sort of one at a time and uh, zoom in here and uh, uh, positively ID uh, that um, that marker, okay? So you're gonna do that. I, I would do it on at least six of the photos for each of your ground control markers, okay? Um, you know, you can pick whichever ones, uh, you know, make sense to you. Um, I'll sort of leave it up to you. You can see my, my sort of general spread of these ground control points. So, you know, if you want to try to pick the same ones that I did, great. If you want to pick different ones than I did, that's great too. Just make sure that you can see them from, from different angles and, and positively ID them. The, uh, these multi-view angle effects can be a bit tricky uh, when you're doing these um, photo identifiable ground control. All right, so we're going to do that for our September 2021 chunk. And then we're going to go to our October 2020 chunk and we're going to do exactly the same thing, okay? Now this is super important. You have to uh, pick these same spots for your ground control points, right? So that cable spool has to be a ground control point and it has to have the same name. It has to be called point one, all right? So if you just come in here and add a marker uh, in that area, Metashape is going to just automatically give the first one the name point one. All right, 
So um, the alignment process is going to ba be based off of these ground control points that have the same names. So it's really important that, that we keep the names consistent. Okay, so, uh, so go ahead and do that. Um, like I said, I've already, I cheated, I did it already. Um, so once you have that done, okay, um, your, your markers set up and um, sort of selected on all of your photos, then we're actually ready to uh, align the, the chunks, okay? So, uh, yeah, so we can go up here to workflow and then align chunks, okay? Now, it's listing both of my chunks up here at the top and they're both checked, which means those are the, the ones that I want to align, okay? The method here at the bottom, we're going to choose marker based. All right, leave the fixed scale off, okay? If we knew that the, the models were both scaled correctly or scaled to each other, then we could, we could check that. We, uh, we don't know that for sure, so we're gonna leave that turned off, okay? Um, you'll notice here that, that the September 2021 has a T after it and October 2020 has an R after it, all right? So what that actually means is I've already aligned these, these uh, models. Um, Initially, they will both have an R behind them, and R stands for referenced, and that means that there was uh, coordinate information for both of these uh, models uh, when they were when they were built. Okay, if there was no geographic information at all, they would have an S behind it for scaled, and then the T means transformed. So that means we took one model and we aligned it with another one. All right, so. Uh, so that's fine. We can, uh, you know, we, we can go ahead and run this process. This marker-based alignment is really fast because all it's doing is taking the, the one model and then just sort of sliding it around or rotating it or maybe stretching it a little bit so that it fits with the, the marker points that you've defined um, for the other model. All right. So um, when you're ready to go, go ahead and hit OK. And there you go. That's the alignment process. It really runs that, that fast. Okay. Now at this point, these uh, these models should be pretty well aligned with each other, and you can uh, you know come over here to your uh, to your dense point cloud, and you can turn on this sort of uh, you know show aligned uh, models view, and uh, play around with that and see how how good of a job that it that it did. Okay, so in the next step, we're going to uh, rebuild the elevation models. So once we've aligned these, uh, these things, it has updated the sparse point cloud and the dense point cloud, okay? It has not done anything to the DEMs or the ortho mosaics. So we need to rebuild uh, both of those products. Um, actually, we don't need the ortho mosaics anymore, so save yourself the time. Just rebuild your DEMs. Um, otherwise, you won't get the, uh, the benefit of the alignment process there. So we're going to... Uh, uh, rebuild the DEMs. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and start that process here. So we're just going to uh, remove the ortho mosaics, uh, remove the DEMs that we built uh, for both uh, chunks. And there we go. Okay. Now at this point, I can rebuild my DEMs. I'll go ahead and do that uh, offline here, and then I'll show you. Uh, the DEM differencing and the volume measurement sort of process from there. All right, so we've got our two chunks aligned from the different dates, and now we're ready to do our volume calculation. I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I picked these two dates for, for a reason. Of course, September 2021 is relatively recent, but this October 2020 uh, one that we're looking at here is nice because this eastern pad is is bare it's uh, uh there's no wood chips on it so it gives us a good bare ground estimate or bare ground surface from which to to measure so we need to combine the the dem from 2020 of the bare pad with the dem from uh september of 2021 and we're going to do that with a with a dem difference so on our dem for for our september 2021 chunk right click on that and choose transform DEM All right make sure your coordinate system is set correctly the, uh, you should have built your DEM in a projected coordinate system uh, anyway something with a linear unit like UTM uh, and then for our parameters we're going to choose calculate the difference and then we're going to select our DEM from October 2020 
Uh, we can leave everything else the same and go ahead and click OK. Uh, when it asks you to replace the default DEM, you want to say no, otherwise it's going to overwrite the DEM that you just created for September 2020. Okay, so here is our, um, uh, yeah, there we go, our, our DEM difference layer, okay? And notice that uh, Metashape has helpfully labeled it DEM. So we're going to uh, rename that to uh, DEM difference so we don't get confused, all right? And uh, you can spend some time around here with the measurement tool and just click uh, around here and look at the, uh, at the Z uh, difference. So this is the elevation difference. And, and what you want are numbers that are really close to zero. So that's like negative 1.3 centimeters. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, you know, one tenth of a centimeter, right? Um, so we're actually, oops, aligned pretty good here. Um, I should point out too with this measurement tool, I'm clicking, but if I if I click again with it, then it's going to draw a line and give me the distance of the line. So if I just hit the escape key after each one, it resets it so that I can just get the the actual measurements um, from from that point. So that's what that's what I'm doing here. Um, okay, so most of my uh, most of my elevations around this pad are are, uh, are pretty close to to zero. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so from here, then I want to uh, calculate the elevation of these uh, of these wood chips. So uh, I'm going to grab my polygon tool, which is up here on the toolbar. Um, uh, I had to click the little arrow thing to open this up, and I'm going to choose draw a polygon. And I already had a polygon in here. Um, let's let's draw. It. Hold on a second. Let's let's delete that polygon. That was just a square. It's not very uh, inspired here. So let's pick something else. Okay, so now I'm going to just draw a polygon and, and what I'm trying to do is, you know, get relatively close to the pad. Uh, I certainly don't want to put a, a, a vertex or a point on any of the wood chips uh, themselves, right? I want to try to keep this on that zero elevation area. Um, it's okay to, uh, it's okay to cross uh, the, the boundary here. Uh, we just don't want to put a vertex there. Um, so now I'm going to grab my navigation tool, which is the pointer again, and I'm going to right click on this polygon I just made and choose measure. And uh, it's going to calculate this profile and each one of these things here corresponds to a, to a point that I digitized for the polygon. And, and we want these to all be pretty close to you know, to, to zero, right? So it's, these are all within, you know, a few centimeters of, of zero. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. If I put one of these vert vertices uh, on top of the of the pile or on an area that has seen a lot of change uh, over the two dates, then I'd get a big value there. And then that, that would potentially skew my volume results. So if I click on the volume uh, tab here, then uh, I have some options for the for the base plane. One is to just, you know, say, okay, that, that, you know, this is the, you know, choose the mean level of all of these points here, um, which should be fairly close to zero. It's, yeah, it's four, negative four millimeters in our case, right? That's pretty good. I could choose a custom level and actually force it to be zero, or I can just choose this best fit plane in which it's going to interpolate a, a surface underneath it. All of these should give you really really similar results. So we got three numbers here. We've got the volume uh, in cubic meters above this base plane. We have the volume in cubic meters below the base plane. Uh, and that would be like divots or, or you know, places in elevation that go sort of lower than, than this zero value, okay? This is largely gonna be just the, you know, within the, the expected error of this, uh, uh, of this model. Um, or this measurement. And then I've got a total volume, which is the, the volume above and then subtracting the volume below from it. All right, so quick way to get the volume estimates uh, uh, out of Metashape. So, uh, so that's pretty much it for, for this lab. Um, should be pretty straightforward. There's a lot of steps involved in, uh, in doing the alignment, but um, 
you know, really, it, it, as long as you can get some good uh, photo identifiable markers uh, on here, that alignment process should work pretty well for you. Okay, good luck. Thank you.